Peak performance. The crew participates in a battle exercise pitting Captain Picard against Riker. The Enterprise is participating in a war game exercise overseen by the most stereotypical sci-fi sounding person ever, the Zach Dorn Serna Kolrami, <laughs> played incredibly over the top by Roy Brocksmith, who I remembered from Total Recall. Let that catch my help. The walls of reality will come crashing down. One minute you'll be the savior of the rebel cause, and the next thing you know, you'll be Cohagen's bosom buddy. Yeah, I was annoyed as soon as this guy came on screen. Riker has 48 hours to prep an 80-year-old ship for an attack by the Enterprise. In orbit around the second planet is the 80-year-old star cruiser Hathaway. But that would be like taking a 1940 Plymouth and saying, let's have a race against a modern-day Formula One car. It doesn't make a lot of sense to do a war game when both sides are purposely mismatched that much. I get the mismatch, but it's a huge gap. Are they specifically trying to test Riker? No, because Kolrami doesn't want Riker to be in it. They're testing the Enterprise, basically. Why would they purposely set the Enterprise against a weaker opponent then? I would think it would be the other way around. Riker asks Worf what he thinks about the exercise, and he says, There is nothing to lose, no sacrifice. And there is nothing to gain. Then Riker says, You're outmanned, you're outgunned, you're outequipped. What else have you got? And Worf reveals his secret weapon. Guile. So Riker ends up picking Worf, Jordy, and Wesley for his team. Kolrami is an expert at a game called Stratagema, an unnecessarily sci-fi looking game where the screen rotates as you're playing in a way where you can't see it when it's perpendicular to you, which doesn't make any sense. The game is played via these weird things that you attach to your fingers and wiggle your fingers around, and whoever wiggles them the fastest wins. <laughs> and Riker decides to challenge him at a game. During the game, everyone cheers in the most unhelpful, distracting way possible, especially Jordy. Riker and the others beam onto the Anne Hathaway, and they can't use the warp drive because they have no antimatter. Since they're so outmatched, they have to improvise. Worf's improvising involves using his experience and extensive tactical knowledge to trick the sensors and view screen into thinking there's an enemy ship approaching. Wesley's improvising involves being a little bitch and cheating to sneak contraband onto the ship. When Riker finds out, he accuses Wesley of cheating, but then he lets them set it up anyway. Wes, you cheated. No, sir. You told me to improvise. And why would Wesley not tell Riker what his plan was first? Kolrami also defeats Data at Stratagema, and Pulaski says, A computer beaten by flesh and blood? You're supposed to be infallible. But humans have beaten computers at regular things like chess, and Kolrami is some super mind alien. It's not that surprising. Yeah, I didn't get the way they acted like Data should be superior at every single possible thing that exists in the universe. But it does set up Data to have self-doubt. He thinks that he's not perfect, so there must be something wrong with him. I like the idea, but he took it too far, because he's made mistakes before, he's been wrong before, but he doesn't react like this. The bigger problem I had with it was the way everybody else acted about it. Kolrami expresses doubts about Riker, and Picard says that he's the finest officer he's ever served with. Remember that this is still only season two, and we've seen everything that's happened to them from the time that they first met up until now. I haven't noticed Riker do anything that particularly set him apart. So because Data is still acting like a baby, Picard has to go have a dad talk with him. I might make a mistake. Yes, you might. But that does not alter your duty to me and to this ship. When the exercise actually starts, we never see them display this kind of tact against actual enemies. It's usually just shields up. Set course, 223, mark 357. Full impulse power, initiate Kuma Manuma. I really like how excited Picard gets. We don't see him like that very often. Riker's improvising and cheating pays off pretty well, and Worf is using his guile. And the exercise goes as planned until a Ferengi warship shows up, which the Enterprise incorrectly thinks is another ruse. And as expected, the Ferengi are a bunch of morons with no real motivations other than we are dumb and we're here now. <laughs> The Ferengi think that the Hathaway is of value to the Enterprise, so they want it. 
The Enterprise pretends to destroy it as it secretly warps away. Then it approaches the Ferengi from another direction, and they retreat immediately because the episode doesn't have a lot of time to wrap up. And Data takes a step backwards in realizing he probably is perfect after all when he decimates Kolrami at Stratagema. He forces a tie. But Kolrami forfeits. That's true. I guess he wins in a way. Like he says, it's a matter of perspective. <laughs> yeah, okay. Whatever, Obi-Wan. <laughs> Peak performance. Overall? This episode had a good overall premise, but Kolrami shows up right at the beginning and he is a stupid character in every way. And right as the episode builds up to a good climax, where you want to see what's going to happen when Riker and Picard are set against each other, the Ferengi show up and just disrupt everything. I would give this episode a C. Wow, you know, I gave it a C as well. It wasn't bad, the concept itself was interesting, and watching how each character handled their part in the exercise gave us more insight, including Wesley as a sniveling little cheater who should have been beamed out into space. <laughs> Korami and his game were pretty dumb and overplayed, but I didn't dislike the episode as a whole. It was pretty standard, middle of the road. And now on to the season finale, which can't be much worse than the end of season one, right? 